topic for discussion is sinus and fistula. Uh, this is a small topic actually we will cover what is actually a sinus is, what is a fistula is and briefly the types of sinuses and fistula uh, both congenital and equite and uh, you know the few different few most commonly encountered fistulas and sinuses we will be uh, discussing in this lecture. Now coming to sinus, what is sinus actually is? Sinus is nothing but a blind track which is leading from a surface down, I mean from the cavity to the tissues, you know, from the, uh, it is a blind track from within the cavity to a uh, super like over, overlying tissues again. Now fistula is nothing but, it is a connection or a blind track between two epithelial surfaces or between vessels. So sinus is like, it is a, a con connection from a cavity to a overlying tissue. Whereas fistula is, it is a connection or blind track between two epithelial surfaces or between two vessels. Now coming to fistula, it is again divided into internal fistula and external fistula. Internal fistula is nothing but, it is a connection or connectivity or communication track between a hollow viscous and skin. When we are talking about external fistula, it is nothing but a communication between two hollow viscous or two hollow viscera. Now coming to classification of the sinuses and fistula, Congenital sinus and fistula and acquired sinus and fistula. In congenital sinus, uh, in congenital sinus or fistula combinedly, we actually have brachial fistula, tracheoesophageal fistula, we have arteriovenous fistula and a preauricular sinus. This is a picture showing brachial fistula. It is actually a communication uh, between a uh, fistula, I mean it is actually a communication between your brachial uh, cyst to the external uh, skin region. So, and then we have certain acquired cyst and acquired fistula, which is again, it will follow inadequate drainage of an abscess, uh, perianal abscesses, acquired arteriovenous fistula, thyroglossal fistula and perinodal sinus can be other examples of them. Now coming to etiology, why actually this sinus or fistula is formed? First is the persistence of a sinus. If there is any necrotic tissue or foreign body, which is not properly drained, then it can lead to sinus formation. When there is no rest, when there is inadequate drainage of any abscess, in case of a specific chronic infection where a continuous separation has been happening there and it has chosen the least resistant pathway, then there can be a persistence sinus C and epithelialization of sinus tract and dense fibrosis around this wall. And in case of malignancies also, we can see persistent sinuses. In which conditions we see persistent fistula? Persistent fistula are usually seen where there are irritant discharges that is continuously happening. For example, an umbilical fistula uh, in this or uracal fistula. In uracal fistula what happens, it is actually a congenital fistula where there is a uh, continuous or there is a fistula between your uh, urinary bladder to the umbilical area. So in this what happens, this fistula usually takes time to heal because there is leakage of urine where there is again secondary infection happening there. So if there are any irritant discharges like this, like uh, uh, you know fecal material or like urine material, then there can be prevention in the healing leading to persistent fistula. Usually true fistula rarely heals, it, it generally requires a uh, excision there for healing. And if there is any obstruction in the lumen of the fistula or obstruction distal to the fistula also, there can be persistent fistula. Now coming to the local examination. When we are locally examining, probing gives us a good uh, insight into what kind of uh, fistula or what kind of sinus it is. It gives about the direction, information about direction and also the depth of the sinus. You can actually check for discharge. For example, you are probing the sinus there and after removal of the probe, if there is discharge, uh, if there is any pus discharge or serious or watery discharge or sometimes no discharge at all, you can actually check for discharge. You can check for communication of fistula. The through and through fistula connection can be checked with the help of a probe. You can also see if there is any foreign body material or sequestrum by actually if it is any mobile uh, uh, thing that is present at the underneath your fistula, then you can also check for the uh, any foreign body or sequestrum that is present. Also, the examination of lymph nodes can give us an idea about what kind of fistula or sinus it is. And coming to general examination, in general examination, examine every system when we are talking about sinus or fistula. In case of chronic empyema, examine chest. In case of osteomyelitic lesion, examine the bone. Check for any inf infective origin in the bone. If, if you are talking about a uh, osteomyelitic lesion of the mandible, check for any offending tooth, check for caries of the tooth, check for fracture site in the 
uh, in the bone or non-healing malunion malunion of a fracture site. All this can can actually predispose for a uh, chronic osteomyelitic sinus in case of bone. So check for all these features in case of a osteomyelitic lesion. In case of any multiple scrotal or perineum fistulas, check for lower urinary tract. So general examination will actually give us an insight into what kind of fistula, what kind of sinus opening that is present there. In case of special investigation, analyze the type of discharge. Is it a uh, any bacterial discharge? If there's a culture of it, if it is any uh, fungal material which is present. For example, in actinomycosis, we have a particular type of discharge from the sinus opening which is a which contains sulfur granules with it, which is pathognomic for actinomycosis. So this analysis of discharge will help us in knowing what kind of infection it is and Thus, if we cure the infection or if we treat the infection, then obviously, or if we drain the abscess that is present there, obviously the sinus of fistula can heal. However, true fistulas rarely heal, remember. And in case of uh, uh, special investigation, you can also go for radiographic examination, especially in case of osteomyelitic lesion. Conversion, conventional radiographs will help us in identifying any sequestrum, foreign bodies or bone changes. In case of contrast radiographs, depth of the sinus of fistula and delineation of course also is help. Uh, we can identify delineation of the course. Now coming to types of pathological sinuses, there are again congenital sinuses and acquired sinuses. This is a brief picture of the pathological sinuses. When we are talking about congenital sinuses, we have umbilical sinus, uracal sinus, sacral sinus, preauricular and coccygeal sinus. When we are talking about umbilical sinus, Umbilical sinus is nothing but there is continued uh, continuation is present from the umbilical end to the uh, which in the fetal midcut to yolk sac. There is still there is a continuation that is present from the fetal midcut to yolk sac. Uh, actually, what ha what should happen when after the birth? This umbilical uh, region has to be closed. I mean, it has to be closed. But if there is a consistent or persistent uh, uh, connection present, then it can lead into umbilical sinus. Usually. Uh, Sometimes, you know, there can be some kind of discharges coming from this umbilical sinuses. We have something called as uracal sinus. In this uracal sinus, what happens? There is a connection between your urinary bladder to the umbilical region. In this, uh, what happens is sometimes there can be urinary, uh, minute amount of urinary discharge can, be, can occur from this side. This can lead to infection and slow down the healing process of this uracal sinus. In those cases, what we can do, complete excision of the sinus is the only treatment. When we are talking about preauricular sinuses, uh, which is one of the again most commonly encountered one, they can be either unilateral or bilateral uh, preauricular sinuses. These uh, sinuses uh, usually we can leave them if there is no any uh, impending problem with this. However, this can if they are secondarily infected, then uh, preauricular sinus removal has to be done. However, operations or surgeries for this preauricular sinuses usually carries little risk because. Facial nerve is in uh, very near proximity or very pro in, in proximity to this preauricular sinuses usually. Hence, uh, treatment with antibiotics will be helpful. Only in case of very recurrent uh, kind of discharges are happening, then preauricular sinuses has to be excised. Now, coming to acquired, we have pilonidal, we have post-surgical sinuses, actinomycosis as we have just described, osteomyelitic sinuses that also we have seen, tuberculous sinus and hydroadenitis separate too. When you're talking about the pilonidal, it is usually seen in case of natal, natal uh, cleft. And what happens is free hair shafts will be present which have migrated towards this natal uh, uh, shaft, natal uh, cleft and this can lead to recurrent infections there, recurrent uh, discharges there resulting in pilonidal sinus opening. And then we have something called hydroadenitis separator, separator one. This is nothing but uh, it is because of your multiple, uh, because of your abnormality in the apocrine sweat glands. In the, because of this uh, abnormality in this apocrine sweat glands, what happens? There will be separative lesions are forming there. In, in these cases, what happens is the separation is or the uh, sinus opening which is present usually isn't chronic in nature. Uh, and they doesn't heal very spontaneously because of this recurrent infections this can uh, this can remain as a pathological sinus itself treatment with tetracycline is usually very helpful in case of hydroadenitis separativa now when we are talking about diagnosis how do we actually diagnose them proper history clinical examination we have certain uh, uh, techniques like practosigmoidoscopy which will actually give us a good insight into type of fistula fistulography and endoanal ultrasound However, above all, MRI is just the gold standard in identifying about sinuses and fistula. When we are talking about management of these sinuses, 
Always remember underlying cause has to be treated, detect and treat the underlying cause. Detection of the site of sinus or fistula is also very important. Identify the cause, control sepsis. Adequate drainage is always, always useful in case of managing any sinus openings. In case of fistula, if it is a true fistula, then usually it doesn't heal. Uh, and in case of that true fistula, fistulectomy is the best option. And other surgical managements include fibrin glue, sentence suture placement, any fistula plug and flaps. Flaps and sometimes flap lift procedure can also be helpful in case of treating fistula. So this is all about various types of sinuses, various types of fistula and how we actually diagnose the sinus and fistula and how we treat them. So this is in brief about the sinus and fistula. Hope you understand this uh, in detail. Thank you.